Curious George. Apple harvest. It was harvest time, and Mr. Rankins needed help picking his apples. George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, were happy to lend a hand. Or foot. Mr. Rankins explained that they needed to collect every apple. I'm going to join the missus round back, he said. Once you fill that cart, can you unload it into the washing trough? Mr. Rankins took his cart full of apples to the barn and dumped them into the water. Must be their bath time, George thought. George climbed up the branches, collected the shiny red apples in his friend's hat and put them into the cart. What fun! High up in the trees, he saw Jumpy Squirrel picking apples too. George decided to help. He took Jumpy's apple and tossed it into the cart with the rest of Mr. Rankin's apples. But Jumpy wanted that apple for himself. He leapt in to take it back, and George tried to stop him. Easy now, George. That lever releases all the apples, said his friend. George looked at the lever. He thought it was an excellent way to get Jumpy out of the cart. George, no! George pulled the lever and Jumpy tumbled out, along with all the apples. That's okay, said his friend with a sigh. We can gather them up again. But Jumpy had found his apple, and he ran to hide it in the barn. George decided to follow. George looked round the inside of the barn in wonder. There were all sorts of things to climb on and swing from. It must be some kind of monkey playground. But George was not here to play. He had to get that apple from Jumpy. If only it wasn't so dark in the barn. He found the light switch and flipped it. Everything moved. It was a machine, not a playground. George wondered how it worked. He watched the bucket scoop up the apples. He decided they must carry the apples high away from squirrels. But wait, where was Jumpy? There he was. Jumpy still had the apple he took from the cart. George chased Jumpy, grabbed the apple and threw it into a high bin out of reach. Suddenly, the machine stopped. George found a button and pushed. The machine started again. This time, all the parts started working, including the moving belt. But when he looked up, he saw all of the Rankins' beautiful apples being chopped to bits. The chopped up apple dropped into a giant barrel and the lid was lowered tightly on top of them. Too tightly. Liquid began to pour out of the barrel. What a mess! George had an idea. He ran up and put his mouth under the liquid. It tasted good. A lot like apples. But there was too much of it. Luckily, he saw some empty containers. George scrambled to put the containers on the moving belt fast enough to catch the liquid. Then he looked down at the end of the belt and saw the containers falling onto the floor. Uh oh! George ran to catch them. Then he needed to stop the machine. Soon he would filled all the containers, but the golden liquid continued to pour out. He looked around for another container and saw a big pair of rubber boots. As the last boot was filled, the liquid stopped pouring out and the machine stopped. Whew! The farmers and George's friend appeared in the doorway. Well, I'll be, Mr. Rankins exclaimed. George froze. The Rankinses would surely be upset that he'd ruined all their apples. George, Miss Rankins rushed up to him. You've done a fantastic job. All that side are already pressed and bowled. Thank you. This is some machine, said the man with the yellow hat. See, the apples are washed here, Miss Rankins explained. Then they're lifted up to the chopper, because chopped apples give more juice. The juice is pressed out of the apples and then bottled. George had not ruined the apples after all. He'd turned them into cider. Mr. Rankins handed an apple to George. Here. You burn it, he said. George knew someone who wanted the apple more than he did. He'd had enough apples for one day. The end.